You know, for the longest time, the gold standard for weight loss was pretty simple. Just eat a little less every single day, caloric restriction or calorie counting or macro counting. But now a major challenger has stepped into the ring, something called intermittent fasting or fast feasting schedules. So the big question is, does this new way of doing things actually work any better? Let's find out. I mean, for decades, right, the whole conversation has been weight management was daily calorie cutting or macro management, keeping calories the same all the time. But now this hugely popular alternative has popped up and it suggests that when you eat might just be as important as what you eat. So which one is really more effective when you put them head to head? Okay, so first things first, let's get our terms straight so we're all on the same page. On one side, you've got daily calorie restriction or DCR. That's a traditional approach. You just cut your calories by a moderate amount every single day. On the other side, we're talking about a specific kind of 4-3 intermittent fasting or IMF. That's where you eat normally for four days a week, but on three days that aren't back to back, you cut your calories way down to something like 400 or 600 calories. Now for a long time, most studies found, well, not much of a difference between these two strategies, but that all changed with a pretty recent headline grabbing study that really, really shook things up. Okay, this is what got everybody talking. It was a year-long randomized clinical control trial, and it was published in the Annals of Internal Medicine. They directly compared that 4-3 fasting plan against a good old daily calorie restriction. So what were the results? Honestly, they were pretty striking. After a full year, the people in the intermittent fasting group lost on average 7.6% of their total body weight. And that that's a huge number. But what does it look like when you put it side by side with the other group? Yeah, you can see it right there. The difference is crystal clear. The fasting group's 7.6% loss was significantly more than the 5% loss that the daily dieters had. And what's so wild about that is on paper, both groups were supposed to have the exact same weekly caloric deficit, yet the fasters just lost more weight. Pretty incredible. Now, I would say it's usually because intermittent fasting, people tend to eat a little less calories. And this wasn't just regular folks who were surprised. Even the study's own co-lead author, Dr. Victoria, was caught off guard. She said, it was surprising and exciting to me that it was better. You can tell this result really bucked the trend of what researchers were expecting. Okay, but here's the really crucial part. This wasn't just about a number on the scale. It had real health implications. See, more people in the fasting group, 58%, versus the 47% hit this clinically meaningful 5% weight loss. And why is 5% number such a big deal? Well, it turns out losing just 5% of your body weight is enough to see real measurable improvement in things like your blood pressure and blood sugar. So case closed, right? Fasting is the clear winner. Well, not so fast. You know, science is rarely that simple, and it turns out there's some conflicting evidence we really need to look at. See, to really get the whole story, we have to rewind a bit and look at another major trial. This one came out in 2017 in JAMA Internal Medicine. It looked at a similar style of alternate day fasting, and well, it tells a very different story. Just look at this. In this study, there was no clear winner at all. The fasting group lost about 6% and the daily restriction group lost about 5.3%. Statistically speaking, that's basically a tie. Completely different outcome from the 2025 study we just saw. And here's the other kicker from that 2017 study, the dropout rate. I mean, a whopping 38% of people in the fasting group just flat quit. That was a huge red flag, suggesting that for a lot of people, that particular style of fasting was just too darn hard to stick with. So this leaves us with a real puzzle, doesn't it? One top-notch study says fasting is better, and the other top-notch study says they're the same. But fasting is harder to stick with. So who's right? How are we supposed to make sense of these two studies that seem to say the complete opposite thing? Well, to get to the bottom of this, we can't just pit one study against another. We need to zoom out. We need to look at the big picture and all the evidence combined. And luckily for us, a massive new analysis did just that. We're talking about a network meta-analysis published in the British Medical Journal that looked at, get this, 99 different randomized trials. 99, that is a lot that's gonna give us a lot of data. By pooling all that data, we get a much clearer picture of what's really happening. So what did this massive review find? First off, for the most part, both methods, fasting and daily calorie cutting, they lead to pretty similar weight loss. But, and this is the key part, when they zeroed in on that specific alternate day fasting style, that 4-3 plan, it did show a small but consistent edge over daily dieting. And just like that, the puzzle starts to make more sense. 
This shows us how both studies can actually be right. The advantage for this type of fasting is probably real. It's just modest. It's not a landslide victory. And that explains everything, right? It explains why one really well-run study could find that small difference, while another one, maybe with a few more dropouts, couldn't really pick it up. The truth was somewhere in the middle. Okay, so we've established there's this small but real advantage to 4-3 fasting. The big question now are why? And more importantly, what does this actually mean for you? Let's break down the practical stuff. So you might be thinking there's some kind of metabolic magic going on here, right? Well, the evidence actually points to something way simpler. It all comes down to adherence, which is just a fancy word for your ability to actually stick with the plan. Think about it. For some people, the idea of only having to be on a diet three days a week and eating normally the other four is just mentally easier to handle than being a bit deprived every single day. And we've got the data to back this up. In that successful 2025 study, the fasting group had a much lower dropout rate than the daily dieters, just 19%. Now compare that to the 2017 study, where the fasting group's dropout rate was way higher at 38%. So what's the big difference? Well, it looks like the 2025 study gave people behavioral support, coaching, check-ins, that kind of thing. That helped them stick to the plan, which led to better results. Okay, so if this sounds like something you might be interested in trying, here's the game plan based on the research. Step one, pick three days a week that are not back-to-back. -back. Those are your low energy days. Step two, on those days, you'll aim for about 20% of your normal calories. So anywhere from 500 to 1,000. Step three, on the other four days, just eat normally. And finally, remember to pair it with exercise, but try to save your toughest workouts for your normal eating days. Okay, and this is the part that's incredibly important. So please listen up. This approach is absolutely not for everyone. If you're pregnant, have a history of eating disorder, or you're on a medication that you have to take with food, you may want to be very cautious. Bottom line, like any big diet change, you need to be very cautious. If you have a bunch of different medical issues, you may want to absolutely talk to your doctor or registered dietitian first. So after all that, what's the big takeaway? The evidence suggests that this 4-3 fasting plan can be a little more effective than daily dieting, not because of some biological trick, but simply because for some people, it's more of a sustainable way to live. And that leaves us with a pretty big question to think about. Maybe the search for the best diet isn't really about finding the perfect combination of foods, but finding the pattern, the rhythm that personally can help you live and stick to it in the long run. And let me give you some more clinical context as I've run about 20,000 people through like a 4-3 or a feast-fast strategy versus long-term caloric maintenance or caloric restriction. I can tell you a couple things. If you run a aggressive enough feast with an aggressive enough fast, it does help biological markers better in the long run. So blood sugar, blood pressure, things like that. Also, that same strategy after the dieting phase is over can still be mimicked with just more calories in real life. This can help with mental performance and is a best way that I have ever found to maintain a weight, still go enjoy yourself and keep a strong metabolism. Because a lot of people who eat the same calories all the time, your body adapts, it's called metabolic adaptation or adaptive thermogenesis. So so the truth is, while even in the studies, it is better for fat loss, it is also better for maintenance. 80% of the weight that people typically lose in a weight loss program is gained back. The research is crystal clear. And that's not meant to be a bummer. It just means that maybe we need to think about dieting a little bit of a different way. I think there are days your body was meant to feast, and that's going to help with your nutrient status, help hormone regulation, help you feel satiated and full and doesn't make you feel restricted. And then having a few days where you intermittent fast, just eat one or two meals, and that is your strategic fat maintenance for that week. That way, again, you can live life, be free, enjoy the world around you, but also maintain amazing health, hormone balance, nutrient sufficiency, and keep the body where you want it most. So I find that a 4-3 or a 5-2, you can change your feast fast days, which is great. We do that all the time with vital coaching. We do on occasion actually run some of the fasting days together. We like it maybe on a Monday, Tuesday are your fast days, then through Wednesday through Friday, you know, you might eat more moderate calorie and then maybe you enjoy yourself on the weekend. There there are many ways to play with this, but I think the first strategy is to start with that 4-3, four days of feeding normal, not thinking too much about it, three days of intentional, very low calorie dieting, maybe protein or fats. I would prefer protein. The research shows that's better for muscle maintenance and really giving that a try and seeing how it works for fat loss and then raising your calories up on each one of those days for maintenance and see how it works for you. I hope this helps.